नमो नम श्रीहर बुद्धिदाय दयावते भक्ति धर्मांगजाताय भक्तकलपद्रुमा च ईशावास्यद यकिंच जगत जग तेन त्यक्न भुंजिता मगृद कस्वेधन मुखम कौति वाचाल पंगु लंघयते गिरी यम वंदे परमानंदमाधव सर्वे सुखिन सो सर्वे सन्त निरामया सर्वे भद्रा पश्य कशि दुख भाग भवे तम सोमा ज्योतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मा अमृत गमय असतो मा सदमय सत वद धर्म चर मातृदेव पितृदेव आचार्य देव अतिथिदेव शांति 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 जय स्वामीनारायण Welcome to Transforming Life Workshop, dear friends. Many times you might have seen people going to temple and doing pranam to God, taking blessings from great saints, and you might have also observed people doing pranam to their parents, elders, etc. But did you ever think why do they do pranam? What is the significance behind doing pranam? So today, Sri Swami Narayan Guru Kul will help you to understand. why to do pranam but before that we need to understand what is called pranam what is called true pranam just joining our hands before someone is not a complete pranam it can be a greeting or namaste actual pranam which is followed since our ancient times is to bow down with utmost respect and gratitude feeling is what a true pranam pranam is not just a matter of action but it's a matter of emotion it's a matter of feeling our head is the symbol of pride and ego when we bow down our head before someone it means that we are respecting him humbly and egolessly respect and ego both are opposite to each other one cannot respect others with ego and if someone is doing pranam with selfish intention to get some benefits then that also is not a true pranam true pranam occurs when we bow down and touch the pious feet of god saints our parents and then we touch our hand to our eyes head and our heart that is what a true pranam dear friends we have identified 
two spiritual benefits of doing pranam number one is blessing and number two is true knowledge so number one is blessing almost all people are seeking for the blessings of god swamiji and their parents and such great people everybody understand in their subconscious mind that blessing is the shortcut way to achieve our goal of course it's true but what is called blessings when we please our parents elders and saints with our seva or any help they wish and pray for our betterment and well-being from their heart and soul their prayer is what we call as a blessing when somebody else pray for our success and our betterment is a blessing for us let's understand the blessings with an example from hindu epic mahabharat in the battlefield of kurukshetra mahabharat war is just about to begin all the warriors kaurava army and pandava army both are all set to fight with each other all of a sudden the king of pandava army king yudhishthir go down from the chariot and he started to move towards kaurava army without taking any weapon all were shocked with his surprising behavior kaurava warriors were murmuring in their mind that yudhishthir might have scared with our giant army and he would surrender to duryodhan but they all were wrong yudhishthir came near to the chariot of his grandsire bhishma pitama and his guru dronachari king yudhishthir bowed down and did pranam to bhishma pitama and dronachari by the humble and honest act of pranam bhishma pitama and dronachari felt extreme glad and they blessed yudhishthir with saying vijay bhava it means you shall win and finally we all know that pandava won the mahabharat war it was just a small act of pranam at the right time at the right place and to the right people which caused the victory of pandava in mahabharat war another example i would like to give which witnesses the power of pranam is markandeya muni's life in our hindu scriptures there comes the story of markandeya muni i will explain you briefly there was a couple namely mrukandu and marudvati they were blessed with a son his name was markandeya once upon a time one astrologer came and he predicted the future of markandeya he said that markandeya will not live more than 16 years parents became so sad anyway parents asked to astrologer that how can we extend the life span of markandeya astrologer said see it's a fate it's a destiny it's changeless we cannot change our destiny but even though there is a way out there is a possibility to change our destiny parents eagerly asked then what should we do then astrologer said you send your child to gurukul ashram and teach him and train him to do pranam to everyone and to serve everyone with humbleness and devotion because the blessings of great sages can change the destiny of a person by listening the words of astrologer parents became so happy parents sent markandeya to the gurukul ashram in gurukul ashram whoever is coming markandeya does pranam to them and serves them humbly with heartful devotion as time passed and years went on the last day of markandeya's destiny arrived his parents were feeling extreme grief on that fatal day at the end of the day one person entered in the gurukul ashram somewhere in the corner markandeya was doing some kind of seva seeing the guest markandeya ran towards guest he bowed down he did pranam and he asked how can i serve you seeing such an innocent child and his humble act of pranam guest blessed him from the bottom of his heart as ayushman bhava chiranjeevi bhava can you guess who was that guest 
that guest was none other than Yamraj, the god of death. Later on, Yamraj realized his duty of coming to the ashram that he had come here to take this child as his lifespan ends today. But how can his blessings go fruitless? Finally, this Markandeya Muni became Chiranjivi, an immortal who lives long till the existence of universe. And my dear friends, today also he is present on this earth. Where he is? How he is, we don't know, but he is alive, he is Chiranjeevi. Thus, true pranam and humble service to the great people can change our destiny even. This is what the power of pranam and this is what the miracle of blessings. This is how we understood the first spiritual benefit of doing pranam, which is blessings. Now the second spiritual benefit is true knowledge. But for today, this is enough. And remember, how much you eat is not important. How much you digest is very much important. Similarly, how much you listen will not make you a better person, but how much you digest and apply in your life will make you a better person. So my dear friends, stay tuned with us to understand the second benefit of doing pranam in our next video. Till then, Let's digest and apply the two epic examples of King Yudhishthir and Markandeya Muni in our life. Thank you. Jai Swaminara. Chem group. One afternoon, there was a lazy man sleeping under a Ryan tree, also called a goldberry tree. A ripened berry from the tree fell on his chest, and since he was too lazy to get it himself, he was waiting for someone to pass by so that they could help him get the berry. After a while, there was a camel rider who was passing by the old man under the tree. The lazy man said, Oh, sir, could you please stop for a minute? The camel rider thought, Oh, this old man must be sick and needs a drink of water. Either that, or maybe he must be in an emergency. So he walked across the whole field to get to the man. And after the camel rider saw the man, he said, How can I help you? The man under the Ryan tree said, A while ago, a berry fell on my chest. Could you kindly get it for me? The camel rider was stunned. Is this what you called me for? The camel rider said, I walked all across the field just to get to you. So the camel rider went back on his camel and rode off. The lazy man shouted after the camel rider, you are a very lazy fellow. All you had to do was to put the berry in my mouth. Satsang can be compared to this story. You should always extend your hands and grab the fruits that Satsang has to offer for you. The moral of the story is, don't be lazy like the lazy man. You should shed your laziness and Always accept the fruits of the satsang that satsang has to offer you. Jai Swaminarayan. In a land far away, lived a hard-working and kind trader. Mostly, he traded in salt. He also had a horse that was very lazy and always avoided work. The trader used him to carry sacks of salt from one town to the other.
Here, let me load these sacks up and let's go to the town across the river to sell this salt. I am so tired today. Why do I have to work every day? I wish I could sleep throughout the day. But no, I have to carry these loads of salt and move. Come on horse, start walking. Cross that bridge. Until then, I'll pack some food for myself. The horse was crossing the river. Suddenly, he slipped and fell into the water. As he was carrying sacks of salt on his back, the salt got wet and dissolved in the water. So when the horse got up, the sacks on his back were lighter. The horse thought to himself, Wow, this seems to be a good idea. Every time I dip in the river, the salt would dissolve and my burden could be less. I must try doing this more often. I hope Master is not watching. When the Master reached the town to sell the salt, it weighed just half of what he loaded. Thinking it might be his miscalculation, he sold whatever salt was left and returned home with his horse. The next morning, he again loaded his horse with the sacks of salt and started to pack his food. The horse yet again started walking before him and made it to the bridge. I must try the dipping trick again before master reaches here. The trader got really confused. As the sacks started weighing lesser every time. The horse purposely started slipping into the water every day. So that the sacks became lighter. One day, the trader followed the horse. and hid in the bushes.
To his surprise, he noticed the horse's new trick. Oh, that's so cunning. I must teach this lazy horse a lesson soon. So the following day, instead of salt, the trader filled the sacks with cotton and tied him to the horse's back. Out of his new habit, the horse purposely fell into the river. Oh no, no! What is happening today? What is going wrong? How are these sacks getting heavier? Oh, my back hurts! What? This time, as the sacks were filled with cotton, it soaked water and became heavier. The horse dipped again and again in water, thinking to drain the salt off somehow, but all went in vain. He somehow managed to get up and cross the bridge. He sat on the ground and panted as the sacks had gotten really, really heavy. The trader laughed at him and said, Horse, I am your master. This is your work. I work very hard and worship my work. I don't make excuses or find tricks to fool others and avoid work. I must teach you to never repeat this and avoid your work. The horse learned his lesson and never tried to avoid his work again. What a wise trader! Right Tofu? He taught the lazy horse a good lesson. Come, let me give you the big bitter medicine for your hand. But hey, I can see it's totally fine now. Maybe you have forgotten about the pain. Tia, I never had any pain. I just wanted to sit and watch cartoons. I was the lazy horse today. I am sorry, Tia. I am really worried about my teacher scolding me tomorrow. Here, take your books, Tofu. I also was the trader today. I just wanted you to learn a lesson. Now you should promise me that you will always do your work and yes, I will help you with your homework. Oh, thank you, Tia. Please, let's finish my homework quickly. I don't want to be lazy at all. I will always finish all my work before doing anything else. I promise you that. <laughs> 